Think Realty Nation is your host, Abi Golhar. Welcome to the Think Realty Podcast. You know, if you're a data freak like I am, and if you like technology, and if you like real estate, and if you like making money in real estate, and if you like the right kind of returns in real estate, and if you like making the smarter decisions than your other competition in real estate, you need to stay tuned for this show. We're talking about data. We're talking about what data you need to look at to do the right due diligence so that you buy smart. You know, we've got a very interesting economy going on right now. We've got COVID-19. Everybody talks about it, right? My producer and I, we're, we've been sick and tired of talking about it all day, even over the Domino's pizza we had. But you know what? It's a real thing. So with me today is going to be Sean O'Toole uh, with PropertyRadar.com. And if I, I, I was looking him up, and if I were to find somebody that's equally as data-centric or like as much of a data geek nerd freak as I am, it's probably Sean. He's figured everything out, and uh, I'm just going to use this property radar thing that he's built uh, to my advantage, and I highly recommend that you do the same thing. But before we bring on Sean, uh, I want to give a huge shout out uh, to the podcast sponsor for today, and his name is my very good friend, Clint Coons of Anderson Business Advisors. He's nationally recognized for providing bulletproof asset protection tax business strategy advice to real estate investors across the country. Go to www.getbulletprooftoday.com and receive Clint's book titled Asset Protection for Real Estate Investors for free while supplies last. Asset protection, you need it, you just don't know when. All right, let's make it happen. Sean, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. You got it. So, data. Give me the long and short of property radar. Give me your bio. Give me a little history. And then we're going to jump into data because, listen, data drives decision making. Nothing else yeah. for me drives decision making. So, let's rock. Tell me a little bit about who you are and what you do. I was kind of a child of uh, Silicon Valley, three startups there. And, um, you know, after the dot com crash, trying to figure out what I was going to do next and ended up uh, flipping real estate uh, over 150 properties yep. um, in, in kind of a, a boom time. Um, and at the end of 2005, realized that market was going away and uh, didn't really want to own any real estate <laughs> and sold everything and then tried to figure out what to do next, whether to go back to tech and in my real estate investing, you know, being a data guy, being a data scientist from Silicon Valley, I just thought there was a big opportunity to do a better job. And so started collecting a lot of data. We launched our first product foreclosure radar right before the foreclosure crisis. Um, that took off, went really well. And then as foreclosures wound down, we uh, expanded beyond foreclosures to all properties and have been providing data to Realtors, real estate investors, mortgage brokers, um, and lots of others uh, ever since. Awesome. I like it. So there are two things. There, there, there are two buckets of where I want to, I, I want to invest our time today. Uh, the, the first one is understanding uh, public records and, and where that kind of plays a role in the investor's decision-making matrix, if, if you will. Uh, and, and I'm talking about Decision Tree, uh, not Matrix the movie uh, that, that's, that starred one of my favorite actors. And, and, then, and then the second is we've got COVID-19. We've got a major crisis, recession, issues, challenges, businesses going bankrupt, foreclosure. Uh, the foreclosure is probably going to hit 1.1, 1.2 million when this is all said and done. That's according to a J.P. Morgan uh, Chase chief economist. That data I heard maybe just a week or two ago. So there's a lot there. Um, Let's start with public records and public data and, yeah. and, and, and due diligence. Like, where, where do you start with, with this? How do I use that to my benefit instead of maybe just, or maybe I just go to Zillow or propertyradar.com? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm the one asking the questions. You just have to answer them. Yeah. So, you know, one of the big things that I learned when I first started you know, doing foreclosures is foreclosures are public records. And, you know, so you get this foreclosure notice and it says there's sales going to happen at some date in the future. But, you know, you don't know anything about the property, the owner, what's going on. And it turns out all of that's answered by public records, too. Right. So that's how I originally kind of got into it. 
And as I dove in deeper and deeper, you know, it, I really realized that one of the best things about being in the real estate business is every single one of your customers is in public records with lots of data about them. And, um, you know, you can know every customer, every potential future customer by name, um, thanks to that, right? Uh, so by mining public records data, you can, you know, see who's in a particular subdivision area, how much equity they have, what loans they have, how often they refinance, uh, how long they've lived there, how old the house is, and then go on and on and on, right? There's just so much data there that is gold. Um, for anybody in, in that wants to sell to an owner or is looking to buy a property from an owner. And, um, and so we focused, you know, the last decade on just making that data easy to access because as it sits in the county, it's really hard to use, really hard to access. And um, yeah, and it has lots of errors that need a lot of cleanup work. So... What does property radar do then? Does it does it scrub that data across all the counties, and is that, uh, or is that just like specific states, or is that nationwide? How yeah. does that work? So when we first launched foreclosures, we launched in California. Then we started expanding nationally, and then it became clear to me that you know, uh, the the regulations that were being put in place, foreclosures were going to slow down dramatically. And so with that, I stopped expanding and um, we've been in five states, Arizona, Nevada, Washington, Oregon, California okay. um, for quite a while. And we're now launching nationally this summer. Congratulations. So I'm assuming yeah. there is a I mean, and, and I know how hard that is because you're plugging into I'm a little bit of a tech geek. I mean, you're plugging into and scrubbing APIs which are like really dirty, AP, like it, really dirty, muddled data APIs from all these counties. And sometimes it just looks gross. I mean, that data, that inbound stream is just like, eh, right? So you have to go through this entire scrubbing process and make it usable for investors yeah. you know, across the country. So I think that's, that's and, awesome that you're doing that. And that's, and that's for the few that have APIs, right? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, a lot right. of them don't. And, so how do you do that? Know, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is like for the, um, uh -oh, the county records data. Yeah. Um, the county, uh, the county recorder data is, um, is, is all document images. So you actually have to buy the images and then s abstract them by hand and pull the data out. And you can't even use OCR to do that reliably because the formatting is so bad. So yeah, gathering the data from 3,142 counties and county-like entities is definitely a problem. Geez, I remember when I was looking up probate um, records in Fulton County, they had, there was no digital, there was no, nothing on digital. I had to go to the county and I had, an, I had to open up the books and like the books were like these weird books that snap shut it was like an alligator's like mouth, like slap shut. And if you didn't move your hand out of the way, then like it would get gobbled up. And I was just sitting there in the back taking pictures for like eight hours. And that sucked. But I, I understand the pain. So when it comes to foreclosure data, when it comes to using uh, public records, obviously that opportunity is there. What's the value um, for using public records in terms of marketing? Is it just now you have access to more? Um, what marketing methods have you seen to be best useful or, or most successful uh, when you're mining public data? Yeah, so, you know, I think historically it's been direct mail, right? And so one of the things we realized early on was that as awesome as direct mail is, right, there's all these online and other tools now. So one of the things that we do that's kind of unique is that we match up email address and phone number and other data to the public records that allow it to be used for online marketing campaigns like custom audiences, um, yeah. email marketing campaigns, uh, telemarketing campaigns, and, and other things along those lines. So really kind of any type of campaign you want to do now, you can start with public records. So from a, from a public record perspective, it's, it might be a little more difficult. Well, not anymore because of propertyradar.com, but pre-propertyradar.com, right? 
it, it, it would be a complete pain to go to the city or county and sift through this stuff. And going to listsource.com seems like a much easier and viable option. But it seems, though, that with public data, you have more control over what you can do and, and, and the type of data you're getting versus going to a listsource.com. Can you maybe talk about some of those differences real quick? Yeah, I mean, so list source is, uh, is kind of the, the traditional model, right, of companies that have taken and made public records easy, uh, easily accessible, right? So you yeah. can go on there, you put on their criteria, and they give you back a list. Um, we're similar, right, in that you can go in with the same criteria and compile a list, but instead of downloading a list of addresses that you're going to send direct mail to, you can look at every single one of those properties, look at the owners, see their phone numbers, see their emails, um, and really uh, work with that data interactively, get insights about that list that you've created, right? What's the average age of the person on that list? Uh, how long has the average person lived there? Um, how many transactions happen a year uh, in that list uh, that you've made up and the rest? So. You know, we're really just taking this old business model of, of reselling public records and uh, turned it into a modern application. Dealing with a crisis right now is, is, is a very difficult process. And it's a very difficult time for even a lot of real estate investors because they're wondering what the heck is going on. Right? Even, from a lending, even from a lending perspective, all the major uh, institutional lenders in this space have stopped. Uh, lending for long-term rentals, et cetera. So as a real estate investor, I find myself wondering, does it make sense to mine for leads right now? Like help me kind of get over, <laughs> you see what I mean? Like help me get over that hump because I'm sure that's a challenge that many of you that are, that are watching uh, also have. You're, you're like, well, if I can't borrow money to go do a deal, then why even market for, for a deal? Yeah, no, for sure. And, and we've had, um We've had some uh, uh, customers come to that uh, conclusion yeah. for sure, right? We sell to small businesses and they've been hit. Uh, there's just no question about that. Um, you know, most of our customers are the smaller real estate investors and uh, realtors and, and the rest. So that's certainly, uh, certainly an issue. You know, the reality though is working out a little bit different. Sales are certainly slower, but we're actually seeing prices rise as inventories come off the market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how that all plays out over time, I think is gonna be interesting. There's an awful lot of stimulus going into the market and, you know, we're gonna increase our balance sheet uh, or our, our federal debt from say, you know, I think it was 4.4, we worked it down to 3.8. Um, you know, we'll probably go to 11 trillion. And at the end of the day, that makes money worth less and things worth more, at least in, in terms of how they're valued in dollars. Um, so, hmm. are you guys there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm thinking. So, That's a good point. You know, so I actually think this is, that all of this is pretty bullish for real estate and, uh, you know, we'll see. We're in the very early innings. I have no doubt in my mind, and there's lots that could go wrong here still. But uh, you know, lots of lots of possibility too on the upside. And I think in the long run, we're going to see significantly higher uh, real estate prices, especially in the residential space. And um, we're seeing a lot of interest from opportunity funds um, that have raised significant you know, not millions, but hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in case there is a buying opportunity uh, through this. So uh, unfortunately we were born out of crisis, a uh, foreclosure crisis. And uh, you know, a lot of people made a lot of money in that crisis. A lot of people will probably make a lot of money in this crisis. If there's one place and uh, maybe like the last gold nugget here as, as we kind of, as we close out this interview, if there's one place where you'd go all in, right now yeah we you, you just you just mentioned that last foreclosure crisis we had a lot of people that made a lot of money well we're in yeah. we're, we're in one right now we're going to be in one for a little bit of time and there are going to be there'll be a lot of people that are making a lot of money 
How do I tap into that? What's that one opportunity? You know, I think uh, I'm bullish on probably single family homes. I think we're going to have a lot of people that um, are going to seek less dense opportunities. I think, uh, unfortunately, we're going to see a lot of folks move full time to resort communities. Um, yeah. And that may be not a, a very obvious one because like, you know, in an extended financial downturn, those could also get really hit as people get rid of second homes because they have to financially, but now maybe they look at moving to that second home thanks to work from home jobs. And uh, we live in a resort community and, and I wouldn't be surprised to see full-time residents double over the next two years. I like that. I, I, I like single family as well as a, as, a, as a really good option. So if you're listening, maybe that's the play. But don't take our word for it. Take the data's word for it. And that's why you need propertyradar.com. So um, we got to wrap this up. Uh, Sean, I certainly appreciate the time. If I want to learn more about pr Property Radar, what's the best way to get in touch with you and maybe start to interact uh, with the data that I, so, uh, that I need in my life? <laughs> yeah, so we're at propertyradar.com. That's easy. And uh, anybody who wants to reach me, I'm Sean at propertyradar.com. So that's easy too. Awesome. Sean, thanks so much for the time. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Take care. You got it. See ya. <laughs> Thank you, Realty Nation. This next segment is brought to you by Real Property Management, which is the largest residential property management franchise in North America, managing tens of thousands of properties for individuals, investors, and, and institutions throughout the country. You can learn more at realpropertymgt.com or call 888-806-7088. So the three most common mistakes that real estate investors make. It's kind of interesting. One, I would say maybe number four, one starting with you're not looking at the data, right? Like you, you have no idea what the heck's going on. So look at the data. Number in this article on Forbes, that wasn't the number one on this article. That was, that's my number one. So let's, let's call it four. Uh, so mistake number, uh, this is the next mistake per this article, investing emotionally. If you invest emotionally, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get caught into this eBay um, auction trending feeling of I got to have that because 18 other people are looking at it. <laughs> like, I, I just, I got an EOS camera the other day because I fell into the same trap. <laughs> like, it's a big problem. So just don't do that with property. Investing emotionally means that you're not making smart, sound decisions. Number two, you're counting on appreciation. If you're a single family rental investor, what's the one thing that doesn't matter? Appreciation. You don't care. Let that be zero. Why? Because you're investing for the long term. Why? Because you believe in the United States of America. Why? Because it's the greatest country in the world. Boom. End of story. Number three, you're focusing on the wrong market. If you live in California, you may have noticed California real estate prices suck. Boom. <laughs> like that's, that's end of story. I would say if you're in a really expensive market, go to a market that isn't expensive. If you're, in, if you're in California, Washington, or New York, there's nothing stopping you from taking a look at Florida, from taking a look at Texas, Michigan, Ohio, some of the Midwestern states, you, where you can buy a three bed, two bath for uh, between 55 and $100,000. And it's running pretty well. You can keep your expenses pretty low. And you're in it for the long term. There's no point in buying a square inch in downtown LA for $5 million. It's not going to make any sense. So don't overpay. Essentially, that's the moral of that story. Think Realty Nation. It's been fun. It's been real. If you want to get in touch, find me anywhere online at Abby Golhar. You can also check me out uh, on thinkrealty.com slash podcast if you want to visit this podcast again with Sean O'Toole from propertyradar.com or check out some of the other amazing guests that we've, on the, we've had on the podcast. Check it out, thinkrealty.com slash podcast. To finish off, this podcast is brought to you by Clint Coons of Anderson Business Advisors, nationally recognized for providing bulletproof asset protection tax business strategy advice to real estate investors. Go to getbulletprooftoday.com and receive Clint's book, Asset Protection for Real Estate Investors, for free while supplies last. Think Realty Nation, until next time, happy investing.